Vic McPherson. Hi, Vic. It's Claire. So, how are things going in Los Angeles? Hey, Claire. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm making any headway. I'm having a hard time establishing a link between all these killings. You're obsessing over this. If you hadn't quit, you wouldn't be trying to put the pieces together all alone. Don't start, Claire. I know you don't approve of my decision to leave the FBI. But working for an asshole like Browning? No, thank you. Browning won't be here forever, you know. His decision to close the investigation after the mass killer's death wasn't welcomed by everyone in the Chicago Bureau. I don't need to remind you that there's absolutely nothing to prove that the fucker's really dead. He fell in the water when I shot him. I know I hit him. As far as I heard, his body was never found. No, nope, you're right about that. Of course you've got doubts. The water flowing under the Tominova Bridge is ice cold. If your bullet didn't kill him, cold water would have finished him off. <laughs> I'd love to be so sure. When I think of all the women he victimized. Have you found any information on the first killer? The one who the Chicago murderer was supposedly copycatting? His name was Ackerman, I think? Yeah, Mark Ackerman. Son of Governor Herbert Ackerman. He was locked up in an asylum at the beginning of the 30s after two strings of murders. He was never officially found guilty. His father had him hospitalized to avoid the scandal. With the FBI's full cooperation. Corruption never goes out of style. It makes me sick. And the retired inspector, Harrison. The one you wanted to see in California. Did you meet with him? Yeah. He gave me the whole case file for the 1956 investigation. He's convinced that Mark Ackerman was behind this series of murders in Los Angeles. Really? A killer who murders women over several decades, then a copycat who starts it all over again 50 years later? That's well, terrifying. Yeah, but this case is personal, too. My grandfather got himself embroiled in it. He lost more than just his illusions. I think they made him a I want to find the truth for his sake, no matter what it costs me. I hope you'll find what you're looking for, Nick. If I can help you in any way. Do you have any news on Mia, the killer's latest victim? Is she still in the hospital? She's doing better. She's come out of shock. The doctors are optimistic. She should be able to go home soon. I went by to see her yesterday. She's gonna leave Chicago. Too many bad memories. What's new at the FBI? Miller's still having stomach trouble? Uh-huh. He got sick at the New Year's potluck. Some joker put Tabasco in his salmon canapes. We haven't seen Browning much lately. He's distanced himself from the Bureau since your resignation. It doesn't change much anyway. He was never exactly close to his agents. Yeah, you can say that again. The only place for an ice cube like that is in a glass of whiskey. Where's the investigation at? Is anyone working on it since Browning cut the funding? Officially, the killer is considered dead, so Browning closed the case. He seemed rather in a hurry to put that one to bed. <sighs> Obviously. There were some pretty well-placed people who used to frequent some of the girls who were killed. Browning's one of them. I wonder what he had to give up to bury the scandal. And I think that I used to work under him. Ugh, makes me sick. I hope Richard's not harassing you. He's left several messages on my answering machine. He just called me to ask about Mia. He feels responsible for letting her go, giving the killer his opening. I know, he's taking it hard. There's nothing to say that the killer wouldn't have taken him out to get his hands on Mia. Anyway, he misses you, that's for sure. He's looking forward to you coming back. I have one last favor to ask, Claire. A big one. I need access to the FBI's database. For your research, huh? Wow, I'm playing fast and loose with the rules a lot lately. I don't want to get you into trouble. Don't worry about me. The access code was changed a few days ago. I'll check it out and text you, okay? Thanks, Claire. I'll let you go now. Talk to you soon.
It's Richard. Well, I hope everything's going well in L.A. I was sad to spend New Year's Eve without you. Call me back soon. Hi, Vic. It's Richard. I miss you. I'm looking forward to you coming back to Chicago. Love you, sweetheart. Well, let's try to review the clues we've got. I'll record my notes onto my smartphone while we go through them. A newspaper article, dated March 19th, 1956. It recounts the arrest of a suspect in the L.A. murders. I doubt there's a connection between the two cases. Another idiot journalist greedy for a story. A brochure of the Ackerman exhibit organized by Richard. There are reproductions of paintings as well as some interesting information. The Labyrinth Foundation. That's the second time I come across them while I'm investigating. I think they have a website. A newspaper clipping dated March 22nd, 1956. The article talks about a fire in the hospital where Mark Ackerman was committed. This nurse, she could certainly be linked to Ackerman. I've got to find out more info about her. A Los Angeles murders file. Harrison gave it to me. His conclusions differ from the official version. Sarkovic? I, I know that name. Where have I heard it before? Women represented in these paintings are Ackerman's victims. The women represented in these paintings are Ackerman's victims. Power outlet. 